happy today? Yes. 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 I don't yes. think your mic's on. All right, today I'd like to talk a little about righteous choices and unrighteous choices and what happens when you don't make righteous choices. So, if you'd like to start off with Proverbs verse, chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So, in other words, if you really want knowledge and you want to know about whatever it is you're doing, then you have to start by fearing the Lord, because that's the beginning of knowledge. And wisdom. And wisdom. And if you're just going to be a fool and despise instruction, then you're never going to learn anything. Okay. So, and then in um, verse 5, it says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, but a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. So, Again, to be wise, you have to fear the Lord. So it kind of all goes, that breaks down to the same thing. You have to have, know the Lord as your Savior, and you have to believe in Him to be able to get wise. I mean, you can try and try and try, but if you don't fear the Lord, you might learn things here and there along the way, but you're not going to learn as much as you could know, or as much as He wants you to know. And then... Then in verse um, 8, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. So if you... The first step, one of the first steps to being wise is to listen to your parents. So always listen and follow your parents' instructions. Because no matter what you think about them, they've been around a whole lot longer than you have. And I think I'm just starting to get that figured out. And it probably would have helped to figure it out a long time ago, but I think I'm getting it. One of my dad's favorite lines is, uh, I've been 14, but you've never been 40. So, so always listen to your parents and follow their instructions, and that's one of the first steps to getting wise. And then you'll, okay, and then once you want to learn something and you have a goal, you'll be able to reach it a whole lot faster because you've, you'll be able to learn to memorize things much faster. And then in chapter 2, verse 3, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice unto understanding, or liftest, yeah, liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest for her as silver, and searchest for her, as for hidden treasures, and thou shalt, then thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God in Yahshua. So right there it tells you that if you're really, really intent on learning something, then you will. But you have to fear the Lord. So and if thou seekest for her as for silver, and searchest for her as for hidden treasures. If thou if you search all as far as you possibly can and look to the ends of the earth to find what you want to know, then you're going to know. There's, um, it's almost impossible not to. Because if you try, then you automatically dedicate brain cells to memorizing it. Mm -hmm. And so you, if you, you always want to, like when you're doing schoolwork or lessons, you want to try as hard as possible. Focus all your attention on that, and you'll learn a whole lot faster. That's right. Good word. <clears throat> And then it says, if, thou, and if, if then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of Yahweh. So if you do that, then you'll know what it means to fear the Lord and know Him as your Savior. Right. So then, you, then you can do it, and then you'll continue learning it. And then in chapter 2, verse... 21, the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. See, if you fear the Lord, then you can memorize his scripture and learn it and take it to heart and be upright. Then you'll stay there when everyone else around you is bad, they will be driven out. Because if you, um, he says to let your light Go on before others. You're supposed to be a light unto everyone else and not hide it under a bush. Mm -hmm. So you want to shine as bright as possible. To do that, you have to fear the Lord and study His Word and take it to heart. Right 
John. In cha Proverbs chapter 7, verse 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So that's another, that's one of the things that happen if you don't make righteous choices. A prudent man, one that knows what he's doing, where he's going at all times, he'll foresee the danger and he can discern good and evil. And the only way to do that is with wisdom. But someone that is, but someone that is a fool and despises wisdom, he's... Gonna, he's going to go through life, and everything's always going to seem to go wrong in every direction he turns, and he's not ever going to understand why. Right. So you want to be a very, you want to be a prudent man to be able to go through life and actually be a success. So to do that, you have to take Yahweh's word to heart. Chapter twenty-eight, verse one: The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So that's another thing that happens when you fear the Lord and you take his message to heart and you follow it as far and as hard and as long as you possibly can. And the wicked don't. they always looking over their shoulder. They're always unaware. They never know who's after them and who's not. They never can tell what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. But the righteous, they don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about who's after you or who's looking for you. Because if Yahweh says it's your time to go, then you don't have to worry because it's your time to go. And he says he'll protect you. So you always, you always want to be as righteous as possible. Because then the righteous don't have much to worry about. As long as they take, you always word to heart. Alright. First Thessalonians, oh no, First Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's right. So if you're always, if you hang out with people that you think are your friends and they're always and they're doing stuff that you don't think is right, but they're the only friends you've got, it doesn't matter. You don't hang out with them because they'll start rubbing off on you. You'll start picking up what they're doing, and then you'll start copying them, and it corrupts your manners. And without manners, and if everyone was rude and despiteful to everybody, what an unpeaceful world that would be to live in. I mean, who would want to be there? So, you want to... You want wisdom to be able to, to discern from people that are doing things wrong and that are not. So you always want the best of friends that you can get. So, you never communicate with someone that's doing something wrong. You know is doing something wrong. Just don't even go there. Stay away from them. First Thessalonians verse five, chapter or chapter five, verse twenty-one. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearances of evil. Don't even go there. It says you're supposed to stay away from anything that looks bad. You're supposed to stay away from it because that it it's a temptation. If it looks bad, if it just something that doesn't quite look right, but and you okay it and go do it anyway, well then you're going to want to do it more because, well, that was fun. And, well, it was okay just once. Well, no, doesn't even, don't even go there. Anything that even looks bad, just stay away from it. And you'll have a whole lot easier time going through life. And to do that, you need wisdom. So it all comes down, in a nutshell, to the same thing. You have to fear the Lord and understand what the fear of the Lord means. And it says, prove, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. So anything you see, you have to discern it. Work it out. Try and figure out what it actually means. And if it's bad, throw it out. If it's good, you're supposed to hold fast to it. So everything you find that is good, you're supposed to hold fast to it. And if you're grounded in that, which you found that is upright and righteous, then you'll have a whole lot easier time discerning the next time. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not So if you're following us um, If you're going with your friends And they say, hey, let's throw a rock at that window See who can hit it first Don't do it, stupid They're enticing you They want you to do it They're daring you, don't do it 
just back away. It's better to be called a coward than to do something wrong. You're supposed to stay away from everything that's bad. Everything that you know is bad or you think is bad, just stay away from it. It's not okay to okay it just once. So, I think I'm going to finish up with Psalms chapter 37, verse 39 through 40. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in Him. Good. So if you fear the Lord and you trust Him, then you basically don't have much to anything to worry about. Because His promise is right there. That's what, what a wonderful promise. He'll, if you trust in Him and believe in His word, then He'll keep you from all danger. And so that, that's just a wonderful promise to live by. And always keep it to your heart because if you're in trouble and you trust in Him, He'll be your strength. He'll be your shield and buckler. He'll always protect you no matter what if you trust to keep His commandments That's right and on. follow His law. So, I think that's basically all I had. And I think Dad's up next. Very good. Very good. Everybody happy? Amen. Okay, today we're talking about joyfulness and what it takes to be happy. So, raise your hands. Everybody happy? Yes. Okay, good job. Baby's happy. <laughs>
stay away from it, it'll help you a lot. Um, to keep away from it, it will be easier then to stay away from it the second time than if you give into it the first time because then it gets harder. The verse on children obey your parents, I forgot to look this one up. If we can obey and be more joyful doing it, I think everybody would be more happy. If we know what we're doing is good, we won't have to wonder if what we're doing was wrong. Um, something that mom and dad kind of brought to like the other day is that if we're doing something, dad comes in and he might look a little upset. You, at least I know I have the problem, some of the other ones in my family, you immediately wonder, well, did I do something wrong? Is he mad at me? And if you know you're obeying your parents and doing what's right, you don't have to assume that. You don't have to wonder, right. did I say something wrong? Mm -hmm. um, so doing it that way, it's then just plain easier to get along and to live with your family or with others. Mm -hmm. Respecting others, respecting your elders, instead of arguing with people you don't know or silently not doing it, then you won't be always feeling like you're in trouble. Um, one thing is that if you're filled with joy, then sometimes it can feel like a really happy and bubbly feeling. You That's feel right. great, you feel good. Whereas if you are not, then you feel down, you can feel out, you feel upset, you can get bickery at other people. Um, I know whereas some things, sometimes you can even make yourself sick if you are not happy. And as other people have talked about with your water and how it can remember stuff, you get into a habit of not being happy and being bickery, then it's going to come out with everyone. It's going to come out in places where you thought you could hide it. And obviously, when you have that in us, it's the water, it imprints and it stays there. And if we can try and break that pattern mm -hmm. and become better, we will not only be able to get along with our family better, but also with the Lord and right. everyone else. And be able to easily, easier, it will be easier to understand what he's saying and trying to hear what he's telling us when you're praying or asking him for help or anything else. I know for uh, some of the little kids in our family, they like to not quite do what you told them. I even have a problem with this. I'm always going to there. You don't quite finish your job. You're given something, you don't quite finish it. You almost do, but not quite. And that causes strife. If you can do what you've been told, and go ahead and finish it. You will not only it will not only make your parents happy, but it will also make you happy, anyone else you're working good. for happy. And mm -hmm. you will know that you did something right and that it's okay. Um, and you'll be, God will be happy with you and you'll be able to tell. Whereas with the song we sang earlier, Spring Up a Well, if you're happy and joyful, it will feel like a well. Everyone else can see it and it will rub off on other people. Yeah. It's, <coughs> That's good. That's <laughs> It will shine out and other people can see it. Being joyful and happy. One, um, Proverbs 16, verse 18. It says, the pride, go, pride goeth before 
distraction, and a haunting spirit goeth before the fall. If we are acting all great and I can do it better than you, it's not being joyful and trying to get along with everyone else. And you try and do that, little kids, adults, teenagers, wherever you are, it is going to cause strife, not only within your family, but with friends, people I don't want, like you, and you might not even be able to make friends. Um, if a, better is it to be of a humble spirit, this is 19, with, uh, better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Mm -hmm. If you know that what you're doing is right and you can have a humble spirit and do what you're told, then you don't have to be try always trying to be proud and beat everyone else. Always be better. And it's just going to be easier to live and get along. Sometimes that has a way of running off on other people itself. And it can spread, and it's not only the good thing to spread. If you're proud about something that you've done, say you've done something good, you petition the way that mama asked. It's fine to feel proud about that, because then you know you've done something well, you can be happy, and I've accomplished something. You, you have accomplished doing something, and it's fine if you're happy about that. Basically, I guess, what I want to say, God bless me, what I want to say. But otherwise, I hope that we can all try and be more joyful here at this feast and get along better. And when we go home, try and see if we can break some of our normal habits and become more happy with our family. So, I guess you can tell me that is a challenge, try and do better with what you're doing. I don't know who's up next, but I hope I can maybe help someone out. All right, that's yes. perfect. And uh, the Lord said to 
said, Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh? Sure, and shall I of a surety bear a child when I am too old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, and according to the time of life, Sarah shall have a son. And she did. That's right. She was old, and I've always wondered when I read that, well, how could she possibly manage? I mean, trying to chase around like Abigail. It tires me out. <laughs> and I'm not 100 years old. <laughs> But you know, I did stop to think that at that time they usually did have slave women to help. <laughs> um, then Elizabeth, uh, Zacharias, was a um, priest in the temple. And she was very old. I think this was a new group. Anyhow, I know it's a new group, I can't remember where. He was uh, a priest in the temple. And while he was there and doing his duty uh, in the day of, when he was in the temple, they had their own duties to do on the day. And an angel appeared before him to the right side of the ark and told him that they were going to have a child. His wife also was barren until an old age. And uh, he didn't believe it. And so he said, okay. You don't believe with me? You are going to be deaf and dumb. You cannot speak until after the child is born. And his name is to be John. And after he got done with his duty in the temple, he went back home. And Elizabeth became pregnant. And, uh, uh, excuse me now. She did become pregnant, and then she stayed hidden in the home until, like, the fifth month, I believe, I believe, if I remember right. She didn't want others talking about her. And uh, at that time, an angel went to see Mary and told Mary that she was going to be the mother of a child. And Mary says, how can I be? I don't know a man. And, and well, this is going to be of God. And then she then became pregnant and went to be with Elizabeth so just before John was born. Elizabeth was close to 102. She was old in the old age. Uh, and then I got to checking out age in the um, uh, concordance, and there's quite a lot of references to age. And but there's a lot of them back in Genesis. And when I got to reading that, uh, <laughs> I was really quite surprised. I think I have read it before, but I just didn't really pay that much attention to it. But uh, Eve became pregnant with uh, Seth when she was older too, right? And they made older. When you stop to think that Cain and Abel had already went through their problem, and one brother killed the other, you know they had to be at least 20 probably. And so some of these women, when we do get pregnant at 40, we shouldn't feel quite so bad. Eve did too. Um, but then you get into reading that chapter, it's chapter 5 of Genesis, and it lists the men in the, of uh, Adam's family. And like Adam lived 130 years, or how, how many people live on 130, and begat a son in their own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. The days of Adam, after he'd begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Now it goes all the way down to Noah. And this and every one of them usually had a child somewhere at the age of 100 and then went on to beget more sons and daughters. And everyone's on this set. Doesn't say how many. So then I got to wondering, well, it doesn't list any of the women in their names. They didn't have all these children, did they? What did they do? They had concubines or more wives? It doesn't say. Anyway, why? But it lists all these different men, 840 years we got children. And then uh, even um, Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah at 300. Well, he lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And then Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch was 365 years. Methuselah lived to be 187 before he begot Lamech. 
And they made, uh, let's see, then he lived 782 years. And so he lived a total of 969 years, and then he died. Lamech was 82 years, he had a son, Noah. And it says, This same shall come to us concerning our work and trial of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has heard. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 595 years, he has and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech was 770 and seven years. Noah was 500 years old and begat Shem, Ham, and Jacob. 500 years, I just, I can't. I can't imagine who could the age of the By the age of uh, 40, a lot of us are thinking we're kind of over the hill. That's been a famous saying that I've heard for a long time. And I know when I was like 39, my, the kids were saying, Mom, you're over the hill. And I said, no, I am not. My oldest son at the time says, don't worry, Mom, you're just on top of the hill. That's what I think a lot. I know that my youngest sister, um, Renetta, started smoking cigarettes at about the age of 12 to 13. And Roy one time was counseling her on it and told her, you're going to die, it's going to kill you. And she said, so what? Everybody's got to die sometime. By the age of 40, she was much more wrinkled than what I am. And my sister Carol, too. I mean, she really wrinkled bad by the time she was 40. By the time she was 45, she had cancer of the lungs, and she died a very, very painful death. She was on oxygen the last 10 years of her life. And I sometimes wonder what she thought then, she didn't say. My mother just passed away at the age of 92, and my grandmother lived to be 102, and they did not smoke or drink, either one, like they don't drink. As, as I myself get older in age, and it mentions, you know, they, they're less capable in the Bible, I think the loss of strength and memory is some of the hardest things that I have to deal with. And I still need uh, better understanding, and I need credit for the things that I did do right. God took Roy home, my husband, three years ago, and uh, the doctor had asked me if he should do uh, intensive care of him, do everything that was necessary to save his life. And I figured since they'd worked on him for an hour and a half, and he couldn't get his heart started again, in spite of the fact that he had a thing in his heart to make it work, and that was still working. But the heart itself was not responding. And they wanted to know if we should do intensive or work on him, and I said, no. I knew that if they had worked on him for an hour and a half and nothing was fine, he was fine. There was no use of trying to bring him back. If they did bring him back, I knew he did not want anything like that. He did not want the food down his throat and all the things they do. And I also knew that within about 10 days he was going to have to make the decision. Was he going to have another kidney transplant or was he going to have dialysis the rest of his life? And I knew he needed him. He wanted money. And so I told the doctors, no, just let him go in his eye and And uh, I didn't ask me if it was okay. It was in God's timing, I think. And I just knew that it, it was his time to go. We still miss him. When he passed on, he left John free to live his life differently. He came out here. I don't think he would have moved that if Troy was still alive. He meant his dad meant too much to him. And uh, our lives are in God's hands, when to be born, when to die. And I expect that I'll be waiting for him to call home. Thank you.